I okay. think, <laughs> think Ralph should tell us what he thinks happened last episode. Oh, he... Give him 27 minutes so he can rewatch the last episode. No. <laughs> no, no, no. Yo, I'll, will, I'll be real with I you. Give, I remember nothing. I will give preemptive inspiration to anyone who can accurately tell me what happened last Inspiration and or experience, because I could definitely do it. All I remember I is that we left this cave. The table. So who who's gonna take a stab at it? I'll take I'll take a stab at it. You wanna right. like team team up on this, uh, Peter? Well, I remember we all got back to the uh moon veil, the giant tree. Uh -huh. After leaving the laboratory and discovering that Daregrim's like friend ultimately became just like a, the the Moffat, I think it is Nothic. Nothic, yeah. Nothic. Mm -hmm. Um, and then we spoke to them. Everyone was kind of trying to figure out what was happening, and Addison was being super, super bitch, going around the entire facility, speaking to people and getting information. Uh -huh. And then ultimately figuring out that the spell that they found, there was a whole in, like incantation that needed to be performed by these druid circles to tr attempt to heal that area, that blasted area, because that's where vampires were created. And those different um, assholes, uh, I'm trying to remember what their names were. Uh, I spoke to Ganymede, who was the Ganassi scholar, and he gave me information yes. on the and vampire no. lore about Keaton LaFontaine and Nor, the scientist, who okay. created all of this. Uh, and yeah, the Druid Circles consist of Tabaxi, Furbold, Goliath, Tapling, and Lethari. Um, and I don't remember the names <clears throat> of the Tabaxi who were visiting, but we spoke to them, and we had to get the head of this crazy oxen beast thing and bring it to them as a gift, even though I gave them gifts of the shiny tendrils that they can use to leave clothing with. From, like, the troll thing that I cut the hair off of with the scalpels and was able to turn it into those materials. Right. We fought that thing. The thing almost murdered the shit out of me, but we were able to fuck it up. And then Cathixis and I basically pulled some insane Attack on Titan spiraling cut thing to cut off its head. We brought it back, but the creature has a, a, a stench aura that makes people sick. And when we brought it in, the leader of the Tabaxi was hysterical, hysterically laughing because everyone threw up all over the cafeteria and got sick. And then, um, we found out that she is actually the druid leader that we need to help perform this, uh, ritual. And that she will help us go into the hills to speak with, uh, I believe, the Goliath? To get their aid to perform this ritual. Okay. Chris, stop. Anything to add? Now that I actually remember which campaign this is, yes, when we were right as we were about to get those uh, the head, I remember actually when we fought off those basilisks, I did sneak, well not sneak, but I did grab a couple uh, dra drake eggs, and two of them actually hatched, and I am now a drake daddy. You are, that's true. Okay, so, uh, Peter. Which would you prefer, experience or inspiration? Um, is the experience going to be like a nice thing, or is it going to be like, eh, here's like 200? I mean, it's fairly nice for just giving an explanation. It's not 200, but it's not a thousand. I'll go for the experience. Okay, so... Roll a d100 and tell me high or low before you roll it. Okay, so it's backslash r to roll. Well, yeah, backslash first of all, tell me high or low. I'm just, I'm just remembering so I can just write it down. Um, I'll say high. 
Okay. Damn it. 47. Where did you roll? In general. Oh, there it is. Okay. So then you get inspiration. Okay. And Kazixis gets 500 experience. <laughs> For only remembering that he's a drink daddy. Yeah. Thanks, Peter. Pretty much. Uh, <laughs> Teamwork! Yeah! It, well, it's essentially like this whole campaign. Peter slash Addison does all the work, and Kristoff gets a, a, like, a legendary <laughs> artifact sent to his weapon and drink. <laughs> hold on, hold on. S sent the motherfucker that stole like three magical items from that fucking place. Uh, because you were too busy setting a trap to scare someone in bath. <laughs> Someone has their priorities straight, right? You are literally. And, and you also got a cloak of Arachnia, so you can walk on walls. So you lucked out still. And you have a bag of devouring that you can just throw at someone. I'm actually waiting for the perfect moment to use that on someone. Yeah, like you, you, you and I are the only ones who actually got magical items in that whole thing. Well, because everyone else went to eat. <laughs> it's I'm, true. I'm everyone also hoping. <laughs> And looking I'm, at the garden. I'm, I'm also hoping that that plate doctor mask that I have is actually some in some way magical. Like, uh -huh. someday. You, uh, the idea of you putting I'm on a plate doctor mask? I'm not didn't pick any of the plants. Like, I went through all this trouble of describing how many poisonous plants were in that garden. He didn't go to, like, harvest any of it. Well, because, it, I mean, it sucks now because John was saying that he wants uh, nomenclature to go the route of Druid as well. Mm -hmm. And it's like, that would have been really cool, but it sucks. And then also, like, I'm a rogue, because this is a rogue, so we could have harvested poisons. But yeah. nomenclature, it sucks a little bit because it's like, you know, hindsight. Yeah. All right, well, so yeah, so we have our little recap. Uh, thanks to Peter and a small portion to get fixed. I helped. You did. You did. Um, so we we have our recap. So currently you guys are on the outskirts of the forest outside of Moonvale um, uh, at a campsite that Moonless Night and uh, uh, something Heather are uh, I forgot, I forgot the other one's name. Heather, we'll just call him Heather. Um, and Heather is set up on the edge of the forest. Um, you've just uh, basically experienced a long rest, and now you are going off into the forest to locate the, um, to locate the, um, the fear bolt, uh, the fear bolt, the fear bolt, Druid Circle. Um, um purple. So I wasn't sure which one it was. Um, what, was it Fearbolt or was it Goliath? Because you know it's, well, ultimately it's up to you. It's Goliath, Fearbolt, you... Well, you, yeah, you I think we wanted to go Fearbolt because they're a lot, like, if, like with the... Because they're more benevolent. Mm -hmm. And the Goliaths are more, like, you know, like, tough guys. So we were like, if we have more numbers, it would be easier. Like, the only ones that you were actively warned, ag warned against seeking out initially were the Lagarde. Yeah, yeah. So I think we were doing Furball. Okay, so what are you guys, what are you guys going to do? What are you guys doing? It's, um, you, you wake up, you're in your, um, you're waking up and you kind of look around and you see the fire in your camp is dying low. Um, you notice that um, Moonless is kind of off to the side meditating while like contemplating the moon in the sky and uh, and Heather is kind of skulking around the campsite and checking it out making sure everyone is basically safe all right well I um, when I get up, I just, uh, you know, I, like, stretch a little bit, make sure I have all my bearings, collect all my items, like, you know, like, whatever is around, make sure I just do, like, a little thorough check. And then I'll just kind of 
sit for a moment near like the fire, like stoke it a little bit. Either stoke it or like get ready, like put it out, and mm -hmm. just sort of self reflect for a little bit. Okay. I think Ozone's, uh, we're, we're basically camping, right? Mm hmm. Yeah, Ozone's, uh, probably the first one to fucking get knocked out. Who knocked you out? You huh? fell out. This is you waking up. Oh, that's what I'm saying. Like, I didn't, I didn't actually get, uh, what, <laughs> on what, uh, side of the camping we were on. All right, so we're actually getting up. All right, yeah. so. Yeah, there's only uh, three months that we haven't touched this campaign, you guys. Okay. Um. Yeah, I'm just, I'm just gonna get up. I'm not uh, really uh, uh, super, super, super aware, but a little groggy. Get the, get the, uh, you know, crust out of my eyes. Uh, mm -hmm. And yeah, I was actually looking to see. I thought I had a spell that I don't have, so that's fine. Um, <laughs> oh, is it dark? Is it like actually? Uh... It's always dark. You're in the nightlands. Yeah. All right. So, I'll uh, you know, I'll just cast a little bit of a light spell around where the fire is, assuming it hasn't started. Uh, that uh, they haven't stoked it yet, um, just to give us a little bit of light, get the morning going. You, Ganazi, don't have dark vision. I do not. No. Oh. So but it's more like um, the, the sun coming up or like, you know, getting like, it's just to sort of make sure that everybody knows it's morning time without actually, you know, screaming at them to wake up. <laughs> gotcha. So when you cast a light spell, so mm -hmm. it's like, so what is it? Just like an orb of light that's kind of hovering over the fire? Mm -hmm. well, sort of. Usually mm -hmm. the way light is, isn't it like you touch something and, and it illuminates? Yeah. It gets illuminated, yeah. So I'll just okay, put so stone near the fire, as if that was the fire. And then eventually I'm assuming the fire is going to actually kick in and do its part of actually um, moving. So you kind of notice uh, when you do that, what, what is your passive perception? My passive perception, that is an 11. Okay, so when you do this, you notice that... Um, uh, when you cast a light spell, uh, Heather gets somewhat agitated that there seems to be like increased light in the area and starts to like, almost like he's worried and starts to kind of like search around the camp just to make sure like, I guess, well, you don't know why. Just starts to kind of like search around. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, I guess as far as what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna go ahead and Shit, do I even have meat? I think I have, like, jerky. Yeah, you do. Oh, uh, shit. I'm gonna see if I can... Holy shit. Alright, well, looks like we're fighting an elder dragon. It was nice knowing you guys. One hundred percent. Continue. That's... I'm gonna go ahead and feed my, uh, you know, drakes. Well, I guess first I should probably do a knowledge... Ch uh, or... Handle animal knowledge check. Like, what the fuck do drakes eat besides meat? Do they drink like you know, drake milk? I don't know. Oh uh, well, I I would say um, do like a knowledge nature. Oh my god. Ozone all of a sudden feels very very uncomfortable and he gets ready for a fight. Who? Ozone. Okay. <laughs> he gets ready like really really ready for any sort of. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> We got a 12 on my, uh, what the fuck do you eat roll. Is someone making a Hot Pocket? Hot yeah, the hot pocket is our death. You're laughing because I'm right, aren't I? <laughs> no, I thought I muted myself. Um, I think I like double clicked the button and it unmuted, but I'm warming up some food. You know, hot pocket is just a hard burrito, right? That they put pepperoni in once in a while. 
But what I'm pretty sure that Hot Pockets came first. <laughs> sure, you mean before burritos? <laughs> Hot Pockets have been around since the dawn of time. That's true. Maybe in the church of Swole. Oh, wow. <laughs> Sometimes I hate you. <laughs> I haven't had a Hot Pocket in so long. I need it. Why do you, you need it? I need it. I almost bought a Hot Pocket at Sam's Club the other day. Like, a well, box of Hot Pockets. <laughs> and like, nah. I, whenever I think of Hot Pockets, it just reminds me of, like, summer vacation when I was left alone at home and that's what I survived on. I actually remember that. <laughs> yeah, because remember, like, we would just, like, we spent the entire summer taking turns whose house we would go to first. Yep. And then, yeah, whenever you're at my house, we would have, like, eight Hot Pockets. And, and then my house, you'd see the exact same bottle <laughs> of Snapple. Slowly being drunk. You ate like a fucking snake. <laughs> um, okay. So, uh, Ralph, what What's are up? you doing? Uh, I guess if it's just morning time, me and Alexander are just chilling, waiting for the rest of the team to get ready to head on out. Okay. Um, so. <laughs> uh, um. As you guys are going about your morning, uh, uh, as a D DM, it's never good when another DM laughs. <laughs> I don't really want to do with it. Um, <laughs> fucking roll with it. Yeah, let's do it. As you're getting together, you're getting your stuff together, you notice, um, uh, a strange, uh, sort of strange wind that's picking up. Mm. Um, all around you. It, it doesn't. It doesn't. Sorry, guys. What? Well, Sorry, guys. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it it doesn't seem to be coming from any um centralized location or any specific location. Um. Uh, but what you do notice is that it seems to make uh moonless very uncomfortable. Does my passive 19 perception hint me into anything? Um, so what that would hint you to is that, um, it seems like rather than the wind uh, blowing from one place to another as wind is, as wind tends to do, uh, it almost seems like there is a bunch of wind converging on your location. Have any of you guys seen Justice League Dark? No. Mm -mm. It's an animated movie where uh, basically they have Constantine and Zatanna team up. Yeah. I've heard of this. Then I think I did. Is yeah. Batman really sassy? Yeah, Batman. Batman yeah, yeah. Batman's in it. He's like, magic is stupid. Yep, I see it. Yeah. <laughs> Ultimately, good. they fight Felix Faust, and he just creates tornadoes because he's basically a Mongolian wizard. Yep. Okay. Yeah, I remember that. Yeah. <laughs> so when it's like the wind is converting, it's like, oh great, we're just gonna this is gonna be like a fucking wind elemental that's just gonna show up out of nowhere and attack our car. Well, at, at that point, you know, our heir and Nedbro can talk to his people. But isn't he like a level, what, level four, level five, Aero Negro? But uh, I am. Aero Negro stick together. Yeah, but the That's thing true. is that he's a mutt. He's like a mulatto Aero Negro, and that's like a straight on, like, from the motherland Aero Negro. So it's kind of I like you don't have to do. You guys are level six. We're level I'm five. five. Uh, I'm level six. Like, we just got to level five. Wait. Oh, okay. Yeah. You, how are you? How are you Wait, level six? No, sorry, no, no, I'm not. I thought I was level six. I got yeah. it. Because I'm like, yeah, we just leveled up to level five. And I think the session before last. Yes, you're right. You're right. Okay. Okay. Go on. Well, you go on. You explain. <laughs> well, I was you just feel time. a bunch of wind. You feel a bunch of wind swirling around you. It makes you uncomfortable. Don't. Uh, Nothing seems to be happening. 
Well, I just feel like there's a bunch of wind swelling around. In that case, since I have eight hours to mess with this, I'm just gonna cast Mage Armor on myself right now. <laughs> okay. I look. I I go to Moonless Knight because she looked uncomfortable, right? Mm-hmm. She kind of she kind of let out like one of those like low cat moans. That means that the cat's not happy. Yeah, I go up to you. You seem uneasy. Seems to be the problem. I can sense that there is an uneasiness in the air. It's more than an uneasiness. The air is alive. Ching. Kinky. <clears throat> what exactly should we do about this situation? Is there a way to avoid it? Or should we prepare for some sort of combat? Well, there's there's nothing we can do unless there's nothing we can do until the threat manifests. But um, we can either we can either wait here and see if the being moves on, which may not work, or which may not work and may cause whatever it is to end up attacking Moonvale. Or we can move into the forest until it, until the beast either decides to strike or move on. I know I don't have anything uh, specific uh, as an Air Genasi, um, but uh, is there any way that I can get a feel for, I don't know, how like attuned I can be to what's going on, like what these guys are speaking about? Because like, I wasn't exactly involved until, the wind wasn't a big deal for me. Uh, but it seems like everybody's uneasy and talking about like something's happening. Uh, well, um, yeah. why don't you a, uh... I didn't catch. I I'm trying to think of what you would roll for that. Um, okay. um, <laughs> would it be insight? I was just gonna <laughs> I say, know. I was just gonna say, why not do either an insight or a nature check? Yeah, I, uh, well, what's better for you? What if I could persuade the wind to tell me what is happening? No, uh, insight's fine, um, and I don't. Yeah, I don't have a lot of good knowledge. I have is survival, your which is persuasion. Your persuasion, obviously, persuasion is charisma based. Um, right. So, <laughs> you know what? The uh, chicken butt. Persuade the DM. Go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> persuade the DM. Nazi heritage to try to try to. Um, persuade the wind. How is this going to go? <laughs> All right, let's take a look. I uh, want to hear this. Also, uh, <laughs> yeah. think about this carefully. Mm -hmm. Do this well. <laughs> it's it's he's definitely gonna drop the ball on this. Um, so uh, uh, I guess I'll I'll go into uh, a low wind. Uh, sort of thing in my mind more than anything else. Not like I can go too crazy with uh, these sort of things, but uh, you know, trying to feel the sort of as as the wind sort of has like tendrils here and there. You have your your calm spots and your and your stronger spots like waves. Um, certain parts are uh, maybe easier to read. I just really what I'm looking for is you know, is there. Is there anyone out there? And so the, since it's, in this case, I'm using my actual primordial, primordial language okay. um, to speak it out. Yeah, so like, it's like completely different uh, voice technically, I guess. So like, is, is there anyone or anything out there? Oh, uh, just one really quick to fix this. Sorry, I was so um, shocked by my 100 roll. I didn't answer your question. Uh, you got a 12. You're, you're, you're uh, Drake's They Eat Meat. I, I give him some meat. Sure. Go on, go on, Ben. I'm sorry. Yeah. Like, and so, and I'm also just feeling for what that is. Like, is this, is this just another, uh, you know, just the wind itself, or does this seem un unnatural? And so that's you it. speak primordial. I uh, speak primordial. Sort of like a whisper, <laughs> because, uh, because I, voices I carry think, in the wind. I think that the best thing to do is to make your persuasion roll, and yeah. then base the, what you're yeah. going to do or say on how good or how bad the wind is. <laughs> yeah. Persuade the wind. Nice! Holy Yo! Shit. Yo! Ah. 
What's going on out there? Well, um, wait, 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 wait. Can we say that the way you try to speak to the wind is like when Dory spoke whale? <laughs> I, I guess. You made farting noises. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He, he's just like, can you hear me? <laughs> Good times. Right as Peter was mentioning before, yes, so statistically, that was the exact number I needed to roll. Exactly. Exactly. That's how you function. <laughs> oh my god. I think this. Oh my god. So, 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 I, Benny, I want you to walk me through this one. I, how. <laughs> Please walk. Yes. This if one. you do it well enough, you might get XP. So, so Ozone gets up and he's starting to feel, you know, he understands that voices carry in the wind. That he knows he doesn't have to, you know, yell or speak very loudly. And he knows he feels it inside of him. This is something he was born with. Uh, you know, he is of the wind, and and as he goes to put his hand out to something that doesn't, it's not there, but he's sort of feeling out for something. Is like. Yo! Who the hell's out there? At full volume. <laughs> Is it anything dangerous? I hope not. Sorry. Okay. I just, I just, I just imagine it's also like, um, I know what you did last summer. What are you waiting for? <laughs> yeah. What are you waiting for? <laughs> We're right here. Right here, and you say like the actual coordinates on like, longitude and latitude. We're on this part of the map. Okay. So, there are exactly three of us. Sorry. All right. So, um, Jesus, my, one. my greatest fears are spiders. <laughs> In response. That was my inside voice. The uh, and like. Please have inspiration, just, <laughs> just from me to you, because that was wonderful. Um, so, in response to that, uh, the wind um, picks up uh, to gale force in a very short span of time. Uh, the fire, it, the campfire, instantly goes out, and in replacement of the campfire. There is a blazing golden light that takes its place Ooh. directly in in the middle of your campsite. Um, when the light, the wind sort of subsides but still keeps up, but when the light fades, you see uh, in front, you all see in front of you uh, this immense golden serpent with the face Ooh. of a beautiful woman. Mm. Uh, the face of a beautiful woman. I need all of you to give me a wisdom saving okay. throw. Alrighty. I felt I felt her presence, you guys. Oh, uh, and uh, you know what? And a dexterity saving throw. Dexterity then wisdom. Oof. Oh, dex then wisdom. Yeah. Or Wisdom oh. Index. If that's your Wisdom, that's fine. So, you got an 11. Okay. Ooh, so close. I'll tally, I'll tally it up. It's not that it matters much, but, yeah. Dex saving throw. Okay. Nice! Oh, it's going very well. Holy shit! So, actually... Ozone, don't give me the dexterity. Don't give me the wisdom. It doesn't, it's already, I wrote... Oh, well, we're yeah. gonna ignore your roll for that, because that dex is gonna... Oh. That's good times. Uh, wait, wait. That's Addison. All right, so... Um, Deergrum, uh, Addison, which... Deergrum and Cathixis. Uh... Where is your dex, Kithixis? My dex is a 19. And which one is your, uh, and the other one? Okay. And the so, is, uh, wisdom. And, Deergrim, where's your dex? Deir you 19. Okay, so, you guys hold strong from the wind, and so do you, Addison. Um, the, uh, 
oh goodness, ozone, you <laughs> get completely knocked off your feet and and blown back 120 feet. Oh geez, okay. Um, blown back 120 feet. Um, taking. One hundred and nine. Um, is, 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 is he gonna take a d6 for every ten feet, like, falling damage? No. No. We're not nineteen points of damage. <laughs> We're not doing that. I just imagine it's gonna be, like, DBZ style, where they no. get punched through a mountain, because you gotta walk. <laughs> no, no, I'm, I'm going to be extremely generous and only do this. So you get eight damage. I'm sorry, somebody called me and I'm on the phone, so I, I heard uh, something damage. You get eight damage and you're not prone 120 feet away. Okay, um, well at least they can't hit me with, uh, without disadvantage from ranged um, at this point. <laughs> Alright, eight points of damage. When, Addison, when you look upon this thing, you are struck by awe in the sense that you just think that this is an amazing thing that you're seeing in front of you right now. Um, Cathixis and uh, Daregrim, you shit yourselves with fear. Wow, with a twenty. Damn. Okay. Yeah, you guys are 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 terrified of this thing in front of you. Um, Holy shit! So you needed to get above a twenty. You needed to get exactly a twenty-one. That is bad. This is what I rolled on the This is what I rolled on the random encounter table. <laughs> but you did roll a hundred. Oh, you pissed it off. Yeah, well, I don't know why. I just spoke its language, maybe. <laughs> um. Uh. So the thing, uh, kind of looks. Ar so the thing kind of looks around. Um. And uh. It it starts speaking in a in a sort of syllabant. Uh, in a sort of sylvan tongue that echoes across the plane, so you can actually you can actually hear this um, ozone, even though you're 120 feet away, um, and it sort of reverberates through everyone else's ears because it seems so loud, um, and it, it sounds sort of like in Harry Potter, like parcel tongue. I was just gonna say, just like parcel yeah. tongue. It sounds similar to parcel tongue. You recognize it as primordial. Ah. You, uh, hold on one second. Give me a moment. Mm. I'm so excited to die today. We're probably gonna die. No. Probably because you disrespected it with that one. Well, you know, that's that has yet to be, you know, maybe that was our customary greeting. You don't know anything about that, air That's elementals. the way the dice go. Yeah. Hello? Sorry. Stop. Okay. So, um, uh, she asked, uh, 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 what you hear, Ozone, is where is the child of Cirrus? And, but that's like from that area, right? What happened? That's from the, it's clearly coming from the being that's in the middle, right? Oh, yeah. In the fireplace. Okay. It's like saying, like, it's saying, where is the child of Cirrus? Bring him to me. I whispered to myself, uh, is, it, did it sound like a f anything? Unknown. Wow. What, what, uh, did it sound like a male? Anything? Did it sound like a male? In the sense? Yeah, like, yeah, like, uh, like gender-wise, like, was this, like, a... He did oh, say that it was a snake with the face of a beautiful woman, right? Yeah, okay. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. so, uh, yeah, like, I just whispered to myself, like, she talking to me? And then, like, uh... I, I don't yell out yet. I figure out I'll, I'll I'll start making my way back, but in a in a sort of in a very uh, defensive, you know, just making oh, sure like so I want to get back to my friends. But uh, 
at the same time approaching something very dangerous. Mm-hmm. Yeah. We're gonna but I don't die. respond out loud. So what do you got? What do the rest of you guys do? Uh, Getting ready for point? initiative. Uh right in the fuck away. Well, well yes, that would be what you would be doing. Um so you can do that, that's fine. What about you, Addison? Well, <clears throat> I look at this thing, and I don't understand uh, what it said. So you don't. You don't I, understand that. It just sounds like a bunch of. It sounds like a bunch of syllabin hisses to you. Yeah, I just kind of like you know hold out my hands, like just sort of like to let it know, like I'm not being in any way, shape, or form aggressive. I apologize if any of us have offended you or in any way disrespected you. Is there anything that we can do to assist you? Since why do these... Okay, so... Uh, it, it turns to you... Um, it, it turns to you and you... You get the impression that it's sort of trying to... get a measure of you in the sense of like who you are it's like sort of sizing you up mm -hmm. um, but not in not in an overtly aggressive way like it, it it's, it's like pondering me yeah mm -hmm. um and you notice that along its along the sides of its face uh where its eyebrows would be are are two long tendrils that are kind of like flapping on either that are kind of like Undulating on either side of its face. Ah, so we're and battling a, a Milo tip. Yes, yeah, sort the of. The Pokemon. That's, it, that's kind of what it looks like. Uh, that's kind of what it looks like. Um, and it reaches one of those things over towards you and attempts to touch you with it. Okay, I <laughs> let it, since it doesn't seem aggressive, I stand there, hands open, and I'm like, you know, the just very open body language, mm -hmm. and just allow it. Okay. Um, uh, you allow it to touch your. You allow it to touch your forehead. Yes. Uh, you now know the primordial. Oh what? Uh, oh, wait. I can add that to my languages. Yep. Oh well, fuck me sideways. Okay. Everybody, go touch it. Learn a language. <laughs> um, just touch it all over. So um, so not only. Milotic, but it's also reverse Starfire. It leans, uh, it, it lowers its face to you, so its face is level with yours. And you notice that even though this thing is massive in size, its face is more or less about the size of your face. When it hmm. like lowers its face down to you, like it's yeah. very long and sinuous. Yeah. But its face is about the size of your face. It's a normal yeah. human That's size. very disconcerting. Yeah. It's very uncomfortable. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, and it low, it brings its face in close to yours and goes and. and Cyrus, baby, there is the child of Cirrus. Does that ring a bell to me at all in any way, shape, or form? Uh, roll a uh, knowledge, uh, uh, religion, arcana, or religion or arcana. All right, I think arcana is the only one that I get my full proficiency in. So let's see. In 18. Um, you've heard Cirrus talked about in um, various myths as one of the four elemental uh, as one of the four primordial dragons. Cirrus was the dragon of wind, dragon of air. Um, Cirrus was the dragon of, uh, of wind and air. Um, and... Uh, and basically is sort of the personification of air, of air itself. Mm -hmm. So the air of the planet itself is is thought to be Cirrus's sleeping body. 
Huh. <clears throat> okay. Bozo um, knows that. So, can I roll a check to look at this thing and try to figure out if I have read about what the fuck this thing is that I'm talking to? Um, you can. What would that be? Uh, also knowledge arcana or religion. Has Ozo never seen this thing before? Or anything like this? Uh, you would also have to roll a knowledge arcana or religion. Yeah, okay. I got, but it, I got but it. it wouldn't be a common thing. But cool. yours would be with advantage, Ozone. Okay. Wouldn't it be at disadvantage because he's at 20, 120 feet away and it's so small at this point? Well, I was pretty close before. <laughs> More. <laughs> a long time ago. <laughs> yeah, I got an 11. An 11? Um, no. Uh, it, it, it's almost like there's, it, it's almost like there's this nagging sensation that you should know something, but you're not putting the pieces together. Oh. It's, it's kind of like something I would know, but in the heat of the moment, it's like everything just kind of slips away. Kind of, yeah. Like you're not putting the pieces together, like almost like you have a bunch of puzzles, but they're not fitting. Yeah, okay. Well, so as... You know, she says this to me. I look to her and say, and she said, "The child of Cirrus, or the heir of Cirrus." The child of Cirrus. Sweet Jesus, Ozone. Oh my God. You're wonderful. And I will both the same. It's good. So, Ozone, you have. <laughs> you really should ask me for some guidance next time. <laughs> I still don't have inspiration, but you can't. From feet away. Yes. <laughs> well, also, this, the only thing I can say to Airgrim is you're, like, crapping your pants in fear. That's true. Well, the two of you would be, like, the two of you, um, actually, give me percentage die and tell me high or low before you roll. All right, so, Christoph, you go first, high or low. Low, just like my spirits. <laughs> and what, okay, um, Deirgrim, what about you? High. Okay. So high for Deirgrim, low for Katixis. So, so are we both rolling, or is one Yeah, 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 roll. Both of you roll. I just wanted, before the roll happened, to know which ones you chose. So that way it wasn't like a clusterfuck. Hey! That was your- oh! Okay. Yeah, to fix this, got it. Oh. Damn it. So close. Okay. So, can so, Fixus get that and another 500 experience? No. Hey! Uh, can oh. Fixus is. Can is no longer paralyzed with fear, but he will have disadvantage on his actions. Um, now, Dare Grow, uh, you are going to. You are going to attempt to run. You're going to attempt to run uh, as far away as you can until you find a place to hide. On the okay. plus side, he has dwarf legs, which are stumpy, and also there are trees everywhere. So you yeah. don't have to go far. Yeah, exactly. I go 50 feet. Yeah, pretty much. All right, so... So... Ozone, you see a pretty lady, mm -hmm. and that's all you know is she's pretty, she's got gold scales. So pretty. <laughs> so if, uh... She likes pretty lady. <laughs> so the pretty lady did ask again, right? Like, so... She yeah, and you did, you, you, you did, um, you did oddly enough hear it, even though it was being whispered. <laughs> Well, you know, the wind. Uh, so, uh, I, I'm still making my way back, cautiously, um, and I'll, uh, in primordial again, like, uh, in, so this time I'll actually address her. Wait, um, wait, did you do a roll to know what, to know about Cirrus? Oh, I did. Oh, no, that was, no, this was for that, that, uh, thing. So, let's see. I, I, I know... Uh, you know Ozone knows. Yeah, Ozone knows Sirius. Like, that's, uh, that's a thing. You don't necessarily know what this thing's connection to Sirius is. Right. Because yeah, that, all you know is it's a pretty lady. Right. And so that's I'll address uh, this being, and I'll ask him, um, what, what do you know about Sirius? 
and primordial. Not in my comment. Yeah, um, I look very confused because I actually understand what the fix it said. Uh, uh, Sorry. Fucking racist. Yeah. <laughs> Anything um, that's not humanoid is the same. <laughs> no, the, you, when you address it, um, the thing sort of snaps its head to face you and you see its, you see its coils tighten in the air around it um, as it looks at you and it, and it, it, it says, you, who, who are you to address me in my tongue? You pissed it oh, off. <laughs> you, you came to us. With the hands in the air. Yeah. What, what? What? What do you seek? I seek the child of Cirrus. I, I make a point of looking around. Uh. Who, who? Who do you mean? Yeah. I'm still sort of guarded yeah, about it. Yeah. I. To... Yeah. I like kind of look. Very panicked at Ozone, like, oh, he, fuck, he's gonna ruin this. And I, I turn and I look at um, this creature, and I say in Prime Primordial now, we mean you no offense. I speak the tongue that you have gifted me. As far as I know, uh, Cirrus is the air itself that we breathe. I do not know the air is, and I don't believe any of us present know of this air of Cirrus. Um, and so when you speak to it, it kind of turns to regard you. And when you say, when you say that, it sort of chuckles a little to itself as it slowly starts to coil around both of you. And it says, Oh, but I think you do. I sense something about you. It, it hasn't spoken common, right? No, no common. So I'll, in common, I'm going to speak to, uh, to Addison, right? And so I'm going to say, dude, I definitely know who Cyrus is. I, I just don't trust this thing. Um, so this is to Peter, DM. So yeah. the thing is coiling around now that not not Ozo like it's tight. Oh yeah 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 yeah. But Circling it's, us. It's, it's, it's around ozone because ozone has rejoined us. Myself and Cathixis because we're all together. Right. Also, what about Moon and Heather? Moonless and Heather. So Moon is kind of. Oh no! You you can't say Moon because Moon was a another oh, cat yeah. in a what? different game. We actually had a cat folk in one of my games called Moon. Mm -hmm. oh. Moonless. That Darrell's character. Hit on. Moonless is just. Um, uh, Moonless is kind of paralyzed in fear, and Heather has Heather has literally run up a tree and is is like attached to the bottom of one of the tree branches. Okay, so this thing is coiling, like not yeah, not like dangerously, but it's like its body is around because it's so massive. Moonless, right. Addison, Cathixis, and Ozone. Yep. Heather and Deagrim are outside of the coiling area of this thing's body. Yes. Okay. That's all I wanted to know for like just location one. Go on. So it, it kind of chuckles to itself and it which sort of sounds like thunder cracking. Mm -hmm. Oh, question. Did did it react at all to what Ozone said to Addison? What did you say to Addison? Uh, basically that uh, I knew, I know who Cirrus is, or what Cirrus is, and that I just don't trust uh, this thing. You said you don't trust the thing? Mm hmm Um, okay. So, <laughs> what language In is common. That? Yeah, okay. Yeah, I'm, I'm checking its language. Oh, okay. So it it snaps its head to look at you when when you say that when you say that, and it narrows its eyes and it starts to form a coil just around you and says, okay. "Why wouldn't you trust me, little one?" Well, first, 
And actually, no, that's so I'll say it in primordial at this point. Uh, you, you came and you attacked us in our camp. That's very uh, impressive. Yeah. Uh, and it sort of, it brings its head straight to be directly in front of yours, so it's like an inch away from your face, and it says, I have yet to harm any of you. Remember uh, that. I, I was just, and this is in common, I was, I had to walk here. It was kind of far, like, you threw me kind of far. It hurt. Yeah. Didn't say Ad yet. Yeah, Addison is staring in abject horror. <laughs> so, uh, so I was like, okay. Uh, like this is this is literally this is literally Addison. Okay. Right, so, so, wait, wait. Okay. So when it got close to you, um, it takes a huge sniff of of you. <laughs> Um, Wait, does, does, does it go like... <laughs> <laughs> sure. Yes, love it. So, it, it, it takes this... <laughs> it takes this oh. huge sniff. Um, and when it, when it does that to you, Ozone, it's almost like there was an exchange of essences that happened. Oh yeah. God, Ozone it's, just can't Ozone's, keep his essence to itself. To his <laughs> yeah. Ozone is not a stranger to this sort of interaction. <laughs> Almost like there was an exchange of essence that happened, and uh, it's it says, and it looks at you almost as it uh, almost as if it knows you now, and the coils, <clears throat> um. The coils part ways from all of you, like it pulls back from all of you, in the mm. sense that its coils literally become insubstantial smoke and push pull away from everyone, and it resettles back in its own coils in the center of the campsite. Um, and it says, "You are a child of Seer." In primordial, yes, uh, and I'll ask, "Why? Why have you come to hurt my friends?" What what do you what are you looking for? I seek to hurt nobody. I come I I I, I come to um I, I see I seek to hurt nobody. Um don't you even know what I am? <laughs> I I already rolled for that, right? <laughs> you sure did. You think it's a pretty lady. Please say pretty lady. <laughs> You're just like a pretty lady with like Smoke a smoke body. That's um, racist. Smoking body. Smoking body. It's um, uh, Ozone would clearly say a pretty lady with a smoking body. <laughs> smoking <laughs> body. <laughs> uh, so, um, it says fool, and when it says that, it, it's almost like it shatters, not shatters, but it hurts all of your eardrums. Like mm. it just it it's like a thundercrack across the entire place when it says that. So I can, I can do that too. Cast thunder wave. I'm joking. <laughs> yeah. So Ozone's gonna be like, wait, 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 wait. Okay, okay. What? Wait, maybe we got off on the wrong foot. Maybe in your case, I don't know if you have those. Okay. And uh, he's gonna, I guess. I think he'll ask. I guess I'm gonna try to persuade her to calm her down or something. I guess in primordial, uh, I'll oh, say. Uh, so. Wait. Oh, no. oh, yeah. Roll of persuasion. Yes. This is the one, fellas. Oh no! You gonna fuck it up? Back. I'm gonna start backing away. <laughs> <laughs> Holy back shit! Away. How many? <laughs> how many ones is that? Literally, oh, to be such a fucking failure. Can I get? Can I? Oh my god! You have inspiration. Please use it. I do, but now I don't know if I want to use it. I'm gonna use it. <laughs> oh my god! Oh no! Oh boy! I'm not even gonna say anything. That last one was, I guess, jinx. All right, inspiration. Okay. Okay. <laughs> I, you know what? 
Yeah. Just for just for sheer shitty another inspiration. <laughs> just for because oh god. Okay, so what are you gonna say? So, so you so, started off bad. Yeah. Okay, yeah. that's how this is that's what happened here. You started off bad. And she thing. was about to strike. <laughs> she was really bad and about to strike. And then you did what? Uh, so, like, I'll say, you know, like, we got off on the wrong foot, um, you know, like, we're, we're, we're peaceful here, I don't know if you are, you say, you say you're peaceful, I believe it, but, you know, you look, you look pretty scary to us, I just want, I just want to make sure that everything's okay, what, what is it that you need from us? I need nothing, I am the manifest, I am the... I am the waking dream of the goddess. I, I, have I like dreams. to imagine that all the ahs and ums were in there too. I'm uh, <laughs> the, the waking dream of the goddess. <laughs> imagine? No. I'm the waking dream of the goddess. Uh, it, says, and it says to you. So um, when she says that, give me another uh, arcana or religion roll. Uh, Don't you, you do with, it? You with advantage. <laughs> uh, uh, you with advantage. Ozone, Addison. You just a straight a straight roll. <laughs> Don't you do it? All right. So yeah, knowledge not great for me. But let's see what I get. Ah, there you go. Eighteen. <laughs> I got a seventeen. Well, okay, both good. All right. So uh, the waking dream of the goddess. Um, that rings a bell in in both of your minds. You uh, you ozone. Um, so you know this to be uh, a wind naga. Mm, okay. Um, and you know you know this to be a wind naga. And what you know of wind nagas is that they are the literal embodiments of. Cirrus's dreams. They are how Cirrus communicates to her, directly to her followers um, in the, like, in the world as she's sleeping. Because uh, Ozone, you know, the yeah. four primordial dragons, they are asleep. Mm -hmm. uh, they are asleep. The way they communicate is through dreams. If they need to communicate to, to someone in the waking world, they do it via these nagas who right. who manifest as who manifest as um, serpentine versions of of the four elements. So this is a wind naga. Um, and so it's like an angel, right? Sort of, right? It's like kind of, yeah. Yeah. Uh, so I'll say, uh, I think, I think I've I've heard of you, uh, of your your kind. You. You're like I have bad dreams, and I think I've seen stuff uh, that looks like you. I've never, never thought that you guys were real. Well, we don't show ourselves very often. It's not often that Sirius needs to communicate with those in the waking world. Um, she did, however, see what your plans are and what your what lies in your future and Oops. she wanted me she wanted me to come here to give you this and she reaches her tentacle forward to touch you yep uh i'll is she expecting does it look like she's expecting me to reach out or i'll, I'll just i'm passive i'll well, stay there well, well, i'll accept what do, well what are you gonna do with uh, yeah, I'm gonna I'm going to accept. I won't reach out, but I'll 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 definitely not make a show of trying to be you know uh, aggressive in any way. There, I'll just I'll like if she is getting closer, I'm just being uh, apprehensive. You like with die. her face. <laughs> Rocks fall. Oh. Okay. I'll have I'll actually wait. She said she to giving something right. So. Uh -huh. I'll, I'll, I won't reach out, but I'll have my hand upturned in front of me, 
but sort of close. Like, you know what I mean? Like, I'm not just, oh, yeah, gimme, 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 but, like, if this, I'm not sure what's, what they're talking about. So it could just be a, you know, a lava ball. She pees in your hand. Oh, that's no. my only weakness. Naga piss. No, she pees <laughs> from her, her eyebrows. <laughs> yeah, she from her eyebrows. She does exactly. everything with those eyebrows. They're fucking amazing. Um, so she reaches the eyebrow forward and she, she touches you in the center of your forehead. Um, mm. And you feel, um, you feel lighter than you ever have. That's because um, I'm casting Levitate. You feel lighter than ever. You feel lighter when you close your eyes. And mm. when you... Um, when you open your eyes, you realize that you are about 60 feet up in the air with oh. everyone kind of looking up at you, not knowing what's going on. Oh. And she's kind of, she, her face is still right there next to yours. And then she removes her, uh, she removes her tentacle and you're still kind of like just hovering there. Uh, and she said, uh, she said, this is a gift from the goddess. Use it well. You will need it in the future. And try not to be such an idiot from now on so you could serve her better. And and with that, there's sort of this uh, there's sort of there's sort of this um, tumult of wind and a, a glare of light, and the the being is gone. But you're still kind of like hovering in the air. So when when she left, did she leave anything physical, or was this uh, did did I not? Uh, actually receive anything right like at least you don't, seem to, receive, you don't okay. seem to have received anything physical okay. but you are hovering 60 feet in the air and you didn't use levity as far yeah. as you know so uh ozone's gonna like i guess she she blinks away or whatever she does uh and ozone's gonna say like wow it's a weird gift i mean i could i could already float if i wanted to and so like i'll try to i'll try to make uh uh, you know, an attempt to sort of uh, come down without just dropping like a rock. Um, All right. Yeah. So you notice that when you attempt to uh, when you attempt to lower yourself, you're mm. actually able you're actually able to control your speed and trajectory as you're moving. Uh, replace levitate with fly. Oh shit! Damn, Poppy. Yo. Cool. And so, yeah, as, as so I'm coming down, I realize that. Peter, the DM is saying is if you roll eight ones in an encounter, <laughs> you get to learn fly and you get inspiration twice. <laughs> yeah. It's coming cool. So, like, you know, you travel around the earth, eventually you're going to be back where you are. So now I'm on the other side of that. You know, it was either never, that, <laughs> it never has failure looked so good. It was either that or you fight an adult gold dragon. Because oh, that's Jesus. literally what the role is. What? Those oh, no. were literally the stats of the thing that I just rolled. Fucking that called it. Level five encounter. I don't understand. That's appropriate that's challenge level. rating? No, it's not. I yeah, say. It, was on the, it was on the table. But we did fight at level five at drag. Was it an adult or a young? I know John was throwing that arena at. But what John oh, gives us like a shitload of magic items. That's also true. We yeah. had a shitload of magic items before. <laughs> that's cool. Give me well, one get... sec. One sec, guys. Fly once a day anyway. Then at that point, that's my uh, that's my feature as a race. Yeah. Uh, so as I'm coming down, I'm. Uh, oh, oh, this is. Well, this is different. And then, like, I start, like, testing it out a little bit, like, moving left mm -hmm. and right instead of just straight down. And then, like, check it out, you guys. And I'm, like, I stay about, like, 15 feet above the ground. And I'll, like, sort of left and right. So, wait, is that, is, it, is that once per long rest? Or yeah. Or once per long rest? Yeah. It's just, like, a feature I can do. So, normally, it would be levitate. In this case, it would be fly. Dope as fuck. 